Okay, we are live. Welcome, everybody. Yay. Yay. Today we begin a new campaign um, set in the universe of Conan. All right, so we begin with character introductions. Sounds like we're going to need to start with Daniel since he's the leader. No, no as leader, I get to do. I get to go last. We, as as leader, you get to dictate who goes first. So leader goes last. So yeah, who goes first? Fuck. The dog goes first. So Kudo <laughs> is your simple Yeah, I was totally expecting wolf. him to go woof, 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 woof. <laughs> so Kudo is your uh, standard timber wolf. He was found by Kurgan, um, caught in a trap, and it was nursed back to health. And so doing so, um, gained himself a lifelong ally. Woof, 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 woof. Oh. There you go. Well, next. Who's next? Yeah, Kurgan will go next. One. You're defining me in order. All right, so Kurgan, um, he is from Belitrium. He grew up in Velitrium and he's was starting to train as a Bosnian Ranger. Um, unfortunately, his family was killed by a raid by the cult of Set. And while he was led astray, um, you know, he they got wind of a raiding party, but the trail that they were following was a false trail. And so as they were gone, the town got hit, and his parents were killed. His two younger sisters were captured, and his uh, younger brother also was taken away. His older brother was killed. So he has taken it upon himself to try to hunt down, uh, one, his lifelong enemy, Graven Karn. Um, be set, though? And... After the raid, he tried to track them down and led them in the direction of Fort Tusculon. And that's where his adventure kind of started. He joined up with the mercenary crew, um, and he's constantly hunting for signs. Next. Halfman. All righty then. So Apentius is uh, an Aquilonian encounter and scribe. He is a dwarf, and he has been employed in Fort Thessalon for some time, writing and compiling reports to send back from the frontier to the government officials for filing. Uh, he was taken into slavery, mistaken for being a very young child, at the time, uh, was taken into a series of host households uh, throughout uh, Ophir and Koth. Um, eventually met a woman who uh, took him under her wing. She was a powerful encounter and scribe and taught uh, Epentius all that he knows. And when she died... The master of the house tried to kill Apentius because he thought he was a bad omen. Apentius fled, found his way back up to Aquilonia. Uh, someone recognized his skills as a scribe, and uh, he was sent off to the fort with a letter of commendation. And he has been someone who has been very helpful around the uh, fort. Uh, mysteriously, likely magically, uh, finding things, fixing things. Uh, he doesn't flaunt it. Uh, and so he's gotten himself a, a fairly good reputation among those who 
find him useful and not much of a reputation with those who find him odd and weird. He has a raspy, unsettling voice because the master of the house where he, uh, where he had to flee tried to poison him. Uh, and while it didn't kill him, it damaged forever his uh, vocal cords. All right, next. Guess that would be Balder. Right. I am playing Balder Wilkinson. He is a giant of a man. Uh, and uh, he is originally from Asgard, very far to the north in the uh, uh, Nordhelm uh, re uh, region. He's the son of Wotan One Eye, a mighty war chief, intent on creating a great alliance among the fractious Aesir tribes. To accomplish this, uh, dynastic mar marriages were arranged, and Balder was handfasted to a beautiful Volva, a uh, seeress named Nana Nepstotter. Uh, but he was so grievously wounded in a battle the following day that nobody expected him to live. So his father married Balder's brother Hoder to Nana so as to ensure the, the alliance did not collapse. Upon recovering, Balder was, well, understandably furious both at his father and his brother, for stealing his bride. And soon after, uh, he visited Nana in secret, but unfortunately, uh, Hoder discovered them in bed and flew into a rage and came at Balder with a bared blade. Uh, in the ensuing fight, uh, Balder blinded his brother and fled, uh, thinking him dead, but not before Nana spoke a prophecy and stamped a mark of strangeness upon him. Since then, uh, he is continually headed south, pursued by occasional Asgardian headhunters, while surviving as a mercenary, a reaver, and a slayer. Cool. And Daniel. Number, number two. who I'd be willing to bet has absolutely no backstory. That's you, Andricus. I was pushing the wrong button the entire time. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay. That's embarrassing. Sure. So, um, uh, Materius grew up around Tanisul, uh, a little bit to the, the north central, little, a little to the northeast in, uh, in Aquilonia. His family ran a uh, uh, a dye maker shop, and it, it, the the general belief was that Materius would one day take it over when when his father grew too old to continue the work. However, a Pictish raid changed all that, and they ended up uh, destroying essentially the village that was around Tanisul where he grew up in when he was away in town selling wares. I uh, came back, saw the town was burnt. And flew but, into a bit of a rage, rage. and More rage. Uh, and then uh, from there, after, you know, from that situation, he, he grew to hate the picks, and uh, went over to Tarantia and joined with the Aquilonian military and was trained in the ways of the spear, uh, feeling that after after a number of years of of, of Serving, he felt that uh, it was time to begin plotting his his revenge against the Picts, and so he headed out west and found to both find work and support himself as he plots, and to be able to ideally kill some Picts as well along the way before he could, uh, while he uh, awaits for the right moment to enact a plan that uh, he is still in the midst of concocting. Or blood soaked revenge. And Bernie. Being in charge is shit. You can have it. Berenike is the average son of an average Corinthian citizen born and raised for war. Uh, he was a Myrmidon in the host of a legendary warrior and after an epic battle where all his other brothers at arms were gloriously killed, 
he somehow survived and was found a nurse to health by a looter who took pity on him. He could not return home to his wife, whom he had left behind with a, a big to-do, saying he wasn't going to be back, and then he can't go back and uh, and make all that. I didn't. I didn't actually formulate all this ahead of time. Um. Uh huh. Brain, my tongue got ahead of my brain. Um. He could not go back to her and assume that she had already remarried, thinking him dead. So he did not bother trying to go back home. He started wandering in search of uh, a proper death so he can rejoin his brothers in the afterlife. Uh, just taking mercenary work and looking for the uh, the epicness. And he doesn't think he's going to find it here. Also, he had no intention of becoming a leader. So he was in the lineup and everyone stepped back? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> Probably one of those deals where everybody was just screwing it up and he finally got tired of it and said, hey, you, do this, do that. And then people just started waiting for him to say stuff. All right, very good. Okay. Boulder. The tankard of Fire. ale flies across the room and hits you square in the side of the face, spilling its contents over your your head and shoulders. Who's the dead man that did this? He stands in front of you. I stand and keep standing. You Modern all find... Seven, two. You all find yourselves in a bar brawl, which you started. How did Absolutely. you start it? Oh, who, me or us? You as us. And just the dude that threw the, the, the bar or the thing, you know? You are currently you. brawling with um, like a, a rival group. They wanted our table. Told them to go pound sand. We may have may have uh, suggested that there was uh, some questionable lineage involved on their side. No dogs allowed. Why is that not doing what it's supposed to be doing? Because you're probably doing it wrong. He has size mod one, doesn't he? I do have size mod one. I am a very yeah. large fellow. You're going to have to fix that on the sheet. Fix what on what sheet? Size mod one makes it bigger than the, uh, the hex. You have to I'm change it. You have to change it to a zero. That's lame. I'm large. You can leave it like that. And the GM has the uh, has it set to eighty percent. I'm guessing. Yes. Actually, no. It is set to eighty percent. Well, fits it. All right, distribute yourselves as you um as you wish. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh. The errors. What have you getting... done? The errors have gone mad. Mad, I say, mad. It's mine. There's no wolves allowed. If you wish to have your wolf in here, you will have to convince the uh, tavern owner that um, you can have him. But he's saying wolf has to stay outside. We don't unless unless here. it's drinking, it has to stay outside. He'll drink That's some ale. Enough to fix. Well, if he's a paying customer, um, he'll uh, he'll be allowed in. There's nothing wrong with my oh, I got a shit. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> no, the the innkeeper's not convinced at all. Um, Wolf has to stay outside. All right, Wolf is probably lying down next to the door waiting all right so move yourselves around because this barb rule has actually been underway so you've already you know squared off with your particular uh, opponent so you can be wherever you want uh as soon as this barb roll would have broken out adventurous would have said been here done that and tried to uh stealthily move behind a box or something. Oh my god, they're all clones of Apentius. Okay, that is all of you. Alright, so give me a stealth roll. Wow, they are clones of him. Are we are we coming in from the field or are we You on... have come in from the field. So you are currently okay. uh you are currently drinking at a tavern at Fort Um Quanyara. Down here. Having come in from the field, um you've been gone for uh however long uh on patrols or whatever. You've dropped in here to catch a break, report, um, and do whatever. Which means we're probably still in full kit. You may well be in full kit if you wish. Um, so, stealth roll failure. So, Apentis... Near these boxes as you're trying to stealth. Um, however, this guy knows that you're hiding somewhere over there and he is looking for you. He does not seem to know where you are at the moment. He's, he's shouting insults. Um, you know, when I find you half man, I'll, I'll shove you head first in the ale. I'll drown you in the ale. You promise? Are, I take it no weapons have been drawn, right? Just no weapons. Fisticuffs. It's just fisticuffs. Oh no. Nice. Not only do you collect 
Um, this guy, he will fall over as he trips back over a stool. Next. No, I didn't hear a ding. Let me see if dings are on. You would think those would be on by default. They are off. Indeed. Ah. Uh, All right, should be on now. I think I shall punch this guy. I will punch him in the face, because why the hell not? And it will he will probably dodge it because I will telegraph. He will most definitely definitely dodge it. He sees your haymaker come in, ducks underneath. Kurgan. Just a punch. You hit. So that be a random hit location? Up to you. Uh, okay, so that's going to do no damage, unfortunately. So you clock him on the head, but it's not uh, enough to get through well, the skull. Does exactly zero trigger the... Uh... No. No, what is it? No. It was enough to do a shock penalty, I think. You have to do at least one point of damage. Or enough injury to cause a shock penalty, and that doesn't do it. Well, great start. That didn't work. All right, he's attempting to punch you in the uh. What armor do you wear? What are you wearing, armor? I have heavy leather. All right, he's going to have a go at your your um, soul plexus. Miss. I'm not working. Because you broke it. Likewise. That is a hit. I shall parry it. And... Shall I add anything to that?
Yes. No. I'll be fine. Barely. All right, Padre, can I get you to make another stealth roll, please? Yes, indeed. All right, as you're crawling in amongst the boxes, he's trying to... Uh, Find you hiding and is just throwing boxes everywhere. It is starting to piss him off. That poor fellow is on the ground. He will get to a knee. That is a successful punch on uh, Materius. Uh, Pinterest is simply going to uh, wait out. I'll need a defense roll from... Um, materials. And let's do a good old fashion. Everybody's just passing you by. Let you defend. This guy on the ground is going to attempt to parry. He's at minus two because he's kneeling. And he will pull it off. He throws his hands up in the air and catches your your fist on his forearms. That's not a foot. That's a fist. That's a foot. Or your foot. It dinged. Uh... This time I am going to go for a faint. And I need to do a thing for that. Ideally, that will be good enough. So, yeah. Hey, that didn't suck. That means he's going to roll really well. Hit him by four. How do you do, Kogan? Faint. Just declare faint. Roll your attack. Attack roll. It's a, it is just your base skill. It is a contest versus their attack or their combat so skill. He'll, I'll do a punch faint for this. <laughs> Not very good. Well, luckily, if he rolls an 18. Hmm. Do you actually have to succeed? Doesn't matter, he does. Materius, your attack. Indeed, and... Hopefully this time he actually plays nice and gets punched. Do 
few damage. Um, patron five. Have you hit him before? No, I failed my first punch at him. All right, so I've applied damage to him. I think four is the only one that's been hit. One got hit, but I didn't penetrate. Yeah, okay, it's all good. Continuing with the punch, this time it's going to be a uh, an all-out attack to the jaw. Plus four, that is. So that will hit on Kurgan. Next guy. You can parry that, right? You, you can, can yes. With your arm. Yeah. Uh, he's likewise all out attack punch to the face. Doesn't do him any good. Lame. I finally get a good feint and you all out attack. This is the way. All right, patron three continues to search. Patron four will get to his feet and as part, actually, no, he's going to attempt to grapple the legs. Uh, let's fail. And patron five will punch to the face again, all out attack. It's a hit. You're not putting the all out effect on there. Yeah, no, it's all right. I know they all all out attacked except for. Well, that Grapple does guy. make it easier. Materials you need to defend. And I shall do the exact same thing I did before. Pentus still hiding? Still hiding. Boulder. All right. So he is going to rear back and faint at patron four. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully getting completely out of, out. Well, by nine, it's not terrible. Unfortunately, so, uh, he should be at minus two, shouldn't he? Because he's still kneeling. Does that apply? Uh, I believe it does. So you'll you'll beat him by one. Yay, by one. Well, better one than none, I suppose. Ah, uh, let's see. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Realized after the fact I really should have set up a Sparta kick on him. But okay. Uh, so, all out. Strong. Sparta kick. Telecraft. Sparta punch kick. to the jaw. No, Sparta kick. Not punch to no, the jaw. No, I, I, if I had set that up ahead of time, I would have done it. I, I this wish is I had madness. This isn't madness. This is just a bar fight. 
So I need that and that and that. We are gravely disappointed in you for not Spartacus. I know. I should have thought of that ahead of time. D-damage. Oh, no. Well, he would have done that at minus one. Which makes it a five, which means that's a KO. Why would he be at minus one? That's the jaw. Oh. Uh, there's no extra damage on the jaw, so... Yeah, it's just the face. You just get a minus one to the health roll. Well, since he did an all-out attack, he can't defend, right? Correct. Yep. Telegraphed attack to the vitals. Damn, dude. Uh, so you normally can't hit the vitals with an, except with an impaling attack. I uh, think you can do crushing attack to the vitals, you... but it doesn't do the extra damage. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. Actually, it'll be a dirty strike to the groin. That, on the other hand. So it's still minus three. Um, I'll just roll it. Even though it says vitals, it's to the groin. He's that guy. We see how it is. Well, do you damage? All right, so everybody loses a round as we're all going, Ooh! Ooh. All right, so he felt that that's double shock penalty. We felt that. And I'll give him a health roll. He winces for a little bit, but then uh, he shakes his head and says, you're going to die. That's wildly unrealistic. All right. Punch. Do damage. Dive to the jaw. He shakes that one off. All right, this guy will attempt a telegraphed punch to the face. That will succeed. So Telegraph gives you what kind plus, of pluses? Plus two to defend. Sky is going to continue looking. He will stand. And he will telegraph punch to the face. So we'll need your defense roll, Gergen. At a plus two. Yeah. No problem. Still hiding? Uh, yes, still hiding. Uh, Petrus is going to take this turn to ready uh, a spell component. All right, this fellow is finally 
on, on his feet again. So I'm going to punch him. And he defends at minus one. He falls over again. <laughs> nice. Oh. That's lame. Awesome. You barely hit him, but he knocked over anyway. Are you drunk, brother? Baron E.K. is going to leisurely walk over to uh, walk over to a Pentius guy, so it'll take him a couple of rounds to get there. You patron one um, closer to me. I wasn't doing my retreat give grounds like I was supposed to be. Jeter. I've been used to you guys having these combats just being talked through. <laughs> Uh, remember that uh, punch is reach C, so you have to be in the same hex for them. Yeah, so step up and hit. This would just be a punch. Or is it just? I'm curious. Do something cool. I'm trying. I'm thinking of. Well, I say I'm thinking of cool things, and I'm just going to do the same thing again. But you know, that is not cool. You should like grab the uh, broom, the nearby broom, and use it like a spear. I was going to say, grab a log out of the fire and use it like a spear. Nearby broom. I, I think a broom would be more likely. Or I just punch him in the face. There's a fire poker there somewhere. Yeah. Well, we don't want to kill these guys. They are, you know, you know, in the same company. Even if they are like, you know, whiny little bitches. Crew. That was another C word. All right, he's going to have a go at Sparta kicking Kurgan. This will be telegraphed. Actually, no, he's, he's going to risk it. Yeah. Yep, yep. He shouldn't have risked it. That means uh, he has to roll decks or fall down. He will succeed, stay on his feet. Barely. Wobble a little bit. He will search. Can you give me a stealth roll, please? What um, hex is that guy in? Yes. We'll say there. Um... Apentis isn't actually in the hex that he's in. He's in amongst the boxes. Yeah. Uh, Defender wins. <laughs> actually, that's not a draw. It's not a tie because your size modifier minus one, right? Mm, that's true. That's true. Geez, that means I have a minus two to hit him. I mean, I'm not gonna, but... But it'd be funny. All right, he's going to get to a knee. He's probably getting a little irritated. I know Balder is. Uh, so, he's going to... Attempt a headlock grapple. 
So two hands to the neck then. Yes. I believe that's a success. It is? Isn't it plus four? Why would that be plus four? Two hand grapple. No. Never mind. Never mind. He attempts to grab grab your neck, but you manage to pull it free. Yeah, you gotta get hold of him before you start getting bonuses for that stuff. So, um, has this fella, or does Pinchus uh, see if this fella has noticed him? The guy has not noticed, um, but he's awfully uh, close. He's awfully close. Okay, so Pinchus is is just going <clears> to <throat> lie or, or or sit still, but he's uh, he's now got two spell components <clears throat> in each finger. What are they? Balder is going to step over here, and since he's got SM1, he's going to reach out and snag his uh, uh, his mug while he's waiting for Patron 4 to finish getting to his feet. All right, that'll just piss him off even more. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like, okay, well, you know, you keep falling down. Uh Berenike will take another step toward uh, whoever that is. Page three. three. Uh, he's in the process of uh, about to give him a tap on the shoulder, but he hasn't done it yet. Can you do a telegraph rapid strike? With extra effort? No. Uh, you can telegraph mm -hmm. rapid strike. Can you? I'm not actually sure about that. But do you... Yeah, they get the defense on both. Works with any attack option, so yeah, that would be... Uh, yeah. That would be uh, one dodge, one parry. You can't parry both, right? He can't. So how does that work? The first one is at Wait, no. standard, and then the second one is with the penalty? They're both at penalties. So they're both at penalty minus six, unless you spend fatigue, at which point it's you're doing minus three. flurry of blows, and it's minus three. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do take two swings at all, burn a fatigue point. Both telegraphed. Telegraphic attack. The first one. And let's get wrong. Both hits. Oh, good. Don't you both? This is kind of wild swing, so I'm gonna do random hit location for both. Wow. <laughs> no doubt. I'm reminded of a... Uh, Dude. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I'm reminded of a D&D &D character uh, in, in uh, way I'm back like, when... Hey, look at me. <laughs> Did you even touch me? I don't know. No, I'm reminded of a D&D &D character we had in a, a game way, way, way back when. And it was like he was playing a monk. He's a halfling monk. So it's like he would hit, but he wouldn't do any damn damage. It's 
So the, the guy um, will sort of laugh and he'll say, is that, is that the best you can do? Seems like it. All right, Materius. Yep. I am. Just had an idea for another attack. That might be interesting or might go terribly. Yeah. Ooh. Kick to the face. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's no. rude. Oh, that, that boots, sandals. Yeah. Uh, that's a twenty damage. That's why he's not doing any actual damage, because he's afraid that if he exerts himself, he's going to start squirting. That's true. Um, however, you are kicking to the face. The guy shakes his head, is rattled a little bit, and then he just sort of stiff-legged, falls forward face first into the ground. And you sure that he must have broke his nose on the way down. Tough luck, good fellow. Tough luck. I need to put that token here on one of my quick keys. I can't put tokens on quick keys. Yes, yeah, you can. can. Huh. I've learned something today, apart from the I'm not sure what you do with it, but apart from the fact that white claws aren't very tasty. Could be important. Okay, so. This guy has not scored a hit, so he's going to um, come in with a telegraphed punch to the face. That will hit. This guy will spot oh, nice oh critical miss that's unarmed critical miss i can roll it because i have it in my quickies The pointing. Mm. Uh, so this guy, Patron Three, will finally spot um, a Pentus in amongst the boxes, and he says, "Got you now." Patron four. Um, he will stand, yeah. And he's like foaming at the mouth. It's like you're playing games with him.
I want to see what it uh, pinch, see what it is about to do. Not you. Pinch is, uh, pinch is, uh will look at up at him and say and say, "What did I do to you?" Uh, Apentius, you know creepy. Apentius should be able to see that uh, Berenike is coming right up behind him too. So this is not going to be a uh, do nothing. Uh, Balder is actually going to spend this round to evaluate this guy, but in the process of evaluating, he's also going to take a sip from his uh, from from the mug that he just grabbed, which will probably infuriate the dude even more. All right. Uh, Veronique is coming up behind uh, number three, and I suppose he should get a uh, perception or something to notice me, although I'm not necessarily trying to sneak. No, he's completely distracted. Okay. Then I will uh, two-hand grab for the neck. Uh, All out. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and double that. So I will all out double. Telegraph grab to the neck. And I will do that first. And then say, hi there. Uh, ah, you know what? I didn't put my wrestling thing on there. Mental note, I need to do that. All good. And then uh, the second in the all-out double is going to be applying the chokehold. Which I have to remember how that works. Chokehold. To apply. Grappled from behind. Both hands done that. Normal grapple, yada yada. Oh, that was wrong uh, hit location penalty. Uh huh. He can't break free because we're in the middle of this. Uh, okay. So victim loses one FP, I guess. How does that work? I think he loses a. Loses FP on his turn. I think. Uh, I think instead of uh, going for the choke, there I am just going to do a takedown and then choke, because that'll be easier. So that'll be a contest, uh, strength dex or grappling skill. And I think I am going to go with grappling skill, which is going to be that. Down he goes. All right, he has no idea that you were there, and all of a sudden he's um, on the ground. He's reaching for a pentis, and then suddenly he's no longer able to reach a pentis. Like his hands just got right to his face, and then yoink! I can do a step and evaluate, right? Yes. You can evaluate any time that you could do an attack. As long as you could, you're within move and attack range, you can do an evaluate. Okay, I'm gonna just do a move forward and evaluate. All right. So seeing how Irvin has gone back and forth with his, the chairs is going to do a giant step. Make sure he's faced properly. And then proceed to punch. And why did it do it twice? That's weird. You got oh, targeted. I targeted. My bad. Uh, so it's success in both cases. damage. Oh, man. Well, we're still doing a D of damage. I mean, yeah. That's... We are a pretty strong group. Yeah. 
I just prefer to roll above a three. This guy goes, no fair. Um, and he'll have a go at the newcomer. So this attack will be on uh, Materius. Every time I see Materius, my brain immediately goes to the Material World uh, song. I don't know why. Wow, he's saying a lot in one second. But he's also not getting hit. A lot of extra efforts. I know, right? Yeah, he can he can take it. Uh, this guy is going to be a little bit stunned. So this turn he's going to do nothing, just trying to work out what the hell just happened. We clearly As he's uh, it, on the ground, their uh, their their sigil of something. I called them like chicken fuckers or something. All right, patron four is furious. He's going to all out attack, charge and tackle, um, boulder to the ground. This is going to be great. Who's just going to stand there and take it? No, I'm going to step out of the way and let him smash into the table. So that will succeed. So he will go head first. He has to keep going. He will go head first into the table and uh, you know stumble across the chair and fall in a in a heap. Um, he looks up at you. And just goes, ah, and then gives up. And it is about this time that there is a penetrating voice which shouts, Enough! I think, uh, I think. Baldur's probably going to respond with a Huzzah! And drink his ale. <laughs> All right, standing at the entrance of this tavern is this fella. He looks fun. Um, you would know this guy. Uh, he commands a fair deal of respect. And the, the moment he raises his very sergeant-like voice, everyone stops and listens. Unless uh, you guys want to continue the fight. Good. My dude is giving well, up, so I I haven't let go yet, but I'm not squeezing. He will walk to uh um Berniki. And Berniki. he'll Bernike. Baron. Bernike. Fifty seven. I hate you people. We know. He will walk and uh, stand sort of over um, Bernike. And he he will look. Um, his, his look is fairly stoic. It's like he neither approves or disapproves of what he's He's seen, but he says, grab your people. The Commandant wants to speak to you. Oh. Right, 
Training's over. Good job, guys. Good training. You've learned a valuable lesson. Hey, boss. Uh, can I have a moment to change my shorts? Go and clean out your armor. So, um, Timon will wait until each one of you has got up and left. Um, you get the feeling that he doesn't have a great deal of patience. So if there's any delay, he will uh, give you a stern look. And then he will follow you all out. And you hear him sort of... Um, call back to the those that are left in the place and he says clean this place up he will take you he will escort you to the uh, the commandant's um, quarters he uh, tells you to um, wait outside. He steps in. Um, you can hear some murmuring going on inside or behind the door. And, uh, then the, uh, the door opens and, uh, he, you know, gestures for you to come in. Does Kurgan actually have a second pair of pants? He would have just had to find a water trough and quickly <laughs> clean himself up. Yeah, people have to drink out of that. Well, Timon will sort of wait disapprovingly as you're cleaning yourself, like you're you're wasting his time. Uh oh, watch out! He's yeah. gonna make Nito trustworthy. I hope you had some fun. He's sort of addressing you, you all. No lasting injuries. I hope so. They're my men that you're uh, roughing up. Well, they fought reasonably well for being drunk. I understand. Um, actually, give me a... Do you have any sort of scribing skills that are appropriate, Apentis? Appropriate to what? Apentis has... Uh, let's see. Appropriate to what? Like scribing. Yeah, I've got professional skill, scribe. Roll your skill. Hey, I knew what to do. Actually, I will probably get does um, Veneki have... Four syllables. Four syllables. Berenike. Berenike. You, ne you know I'm never going to get it. Yeah, you are. Berenike. He will get it right... Uh, last adventure. Being, yeah, without being, without being reminded on the very last one. Wow. Does he have... Yes, he does. All right, so you'll see him Dude, sort of... You drink too much ale. He, without sort of looking up from the 
the paperwork that he's reading, which is um, Apentis's report, he says, you're supposed to salute. Oh, sorry. I've read your report, Apentis. It is very good. I'm glad to see Thank things... You. Things are going our way. Yes, indeed, sir. I understand that you are headed back to Port Tusculan. Soon. Am I correct? Oh, we were already at Tusculum. No, nope. we were at the place down south. I. The player doesn't know if we were headed back to Tusculum, but it uh, sounds right. He says, Good. I need you to do something for me. I have received a message from Tiberius, and all you guys would know who Tiberius is. He is a, uh, a local merchant that operates out of um, Belitrium. He services the forts, bringing, you know, all manner of stuff that the, uh, the soldiers need. And he trades um, fur pelt, pelts because, um, you yeah, know, while you're here, you've got soldiers that are um, in their free time, hunting, getting pelts, or stealing them from the um, the picts, or however they come come by them. So he he usually trades pelts for goods, um, including uh, that is his unfortunate future. Uh, so you know him. He trades his wares, and he also um, has a, I guess you'd call it a harem of uh, prostitutes or whores that he often often sells around the, the various traps to the soldiers. So the Commandant says, um, I have received a message from Tiberius, a delivery of his is overdue from Fort Tusculan. Uh, I would appreciate it if you could drop in, get some details, and perhaps see if you can find out where his his things are on your way back. We should be able to handle that. Very well. That is all. Dismissed. Sure. Um, so remind me of that again. So the, the Tiberius has a missing shipment and we're checking at Tusculan to see where it is. Yes. So he had a shipment that, uh, went to Tusculan was due back, uh, or he's overdue. Um, and it's he overdue would... at Tusculan. No, at, uh, the Litrium. It's overdue coming back. Okay. Uh, since you are going to Tusculan, the Commandant wants you to go to Velitrium, get some details off Tiberius, and then see what uh, the holdup is. Okay. Gotcha. So, two stops, Velitrium, back to Tusculan. Yes. The roads right. um, on this side of Thunder River are quite good, so travel is fairly fast. Yeah, that's 50 miles. Ish. Yeah, 20 miles. I guess 50, oh, 60 miles if right, you go the roads, there. or if you go across the, um, the plains, then, you yeah, know, 30 miles. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah this is going to take a while. 
Well, yeah, but if it's a, if it's a uh, wagon, they're going to be using the roads. Well, they will, but we... It's going to take us a while to get there. It'll be fine. We'll run into uh, you know, some picks on the way. It's kind of kind of a long term project. Is that um, so yeah, I guess it's really only if miles, if you have navigation well, twenty miles out of the way. If you have navigation, um, that's a big if right there. Or if anyone has navigation. Not great at it, but I, I've looked at a map, although I can't read it. You know that while the main roads are marked as um, as you see there, there are like tracks and trails that follow the river, um, both sides that you can also follow. Well, we know that uh, Kurgan is from Velitrium, so getting there shouldn't be too too big of a hassle. Also, it's on the river, and you can't miss that. I have area knowledge of the Bosnian marches, so yeah. does that help? Well, getting to Velitrium is not going to be any issue, and getting to Fort Tusculan from there shouldn't be a problem because that's a main road all the way through. Wait, am I the only person that actually has navigation land? You might be. Holy yep. cow. You're the I'm only ranger of rangers. Here. I'm not from around here. Yeah, you just know which way is north, which is better than the rest of us. I just go whichever way smells like picks. Okay, so given all that, we've got... At least a couple of days, a day or two, getting to Velitrium, and then a day or three getting to Tusculan. So we've got about a week trip, which means we're going to need some supplies. Does our company have a wagon, since we're a mercenary company? When you do patrols, you don't generally bring wagons you're on foot usually going cross country and and such so <clears throat> you would have come cross country and stopped in at um Quinyara. so it so. brings to mind the the question for padre is who did uh who did apentius piss off to get him uh, assigned to a field unit Is he totally asking, he that, really question asking that question himself? <laughs> maybe. I, 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 uh, maybe he's doing it for the extra pay. the extra pay. I need I need the extra money to rent quarters so that I can prepare my incantations. Scribes don't get paid very much, so he goes out in the That's field with the extra odd. dollars. I would think the scribes would be paid more since there's so few of them. Or maybe it gives him extra brownie points. I'm sure he can come up with a reason why. He wants the danger pay. That works. I'll give that some thought. So it's up to you. You can get supplies here. That's not a problem at all. Uh, you are mercenaries, so you are responsible for your your own stuffs. Mm -hmm. Not an archery type, so we can yeah. like, shoot birds. Uh, do we have company money? I have three gurpies remaining from you know in my 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 fundage. I have one in a bit. So you have one. So we have four gurpies so far. That's not a lot. I think I have 135. What was the total amount we were allowed to use? 2,000? 1,000. 1,000, okay. Your mm -hmm. signature gear point count towards that, though. Correct.
Yeah, because I've got the armor and the shield. And I think that's all I spent it on. That stuff's expensive, even for hardened leather. Um, you don't have company money, but if you collect receipts and when you return to Tusculin and present a case as to, you know, these were legitimate purchases and not money spent on booze and whores, then you might get refunded. Might. Refund only works if you have money to spend in the first place. Well, if you don't have the money, you can certainly try and negotiate an IOU or something to that effect. Or you well, could also always live off the land. The real question here real is, question how did, here is how, how did we get... How did we get... Go ahead. Okay, how did we Wait. get to Fort? How did we get to Fort Quin? <laughs> Whoever's doing that, stop it. However, how did we get to Fort Quinara, and what were we supposed to do after that? I walked. You got here via walking. Part Wait, of your under, under what mission? Your regular patrols, scouts, and and such. So, if we were expected to come straight back from Fort Quinara to Tuscal and we would have had provisions already for that. You would if it's on your character sheet. Question mark. Well, it ain't on my it ain't on my character sheet. So, so we ate it all. You ate it all knowing that you were coming here. Yeah, but we don't have any money to buy anything here. Then you have to live off the land want, or negotiate. I 70 derpies, I think, left over. There you go. It's, and then also, uh, I am a hunter, so and I have a wolf that can help us hunt off the land, too. So Six six derpies per day per person, if you want provisions. Otherwise, you can you can hunt. I'll donate my 170 gurpees to the company fund. And I can donate 100 of my gurpees to the company fund. If you were um, doing some stuff for Tiberius, you might also be able to get him to walk out some coin or provision you. So is he here? No, he's in the Litrium. Okay. Maybe you can request provisions from the Commandant to get a, help us get to Velitrium. Well, we haven't got to that point yet. There's, that's another option. But it would be some diplomacy or fast talk or some sort of reaction role. To get you some nope. provisions. Yeah, well, unfortunately, they put a guy in charge who uh, doesn't have any real social skills. Does Epitius have social skills? The Pentius? The Pentius. A Pentius or a Pentius? Uh, no, he doesn't really have any social skills per se. He's got streetwise, but. Uh... For what it's worth, Baldur's social skills are carousing, intimidation, uh, sub warfare, high society, and military, and sex appeal. Do we have you know, a you face man? <laughs> you know, as you intimidate the quartermaster. The that seems like a bad idea. Like go just go and use all those on the CO. I'm sure one of them will work. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Well, yeah, like I said, we've got Kurgan who can, like, you know, shoot animals and we can eat them. And I'll try to... Presuming he has survival. 
survival swampland. This isn't going to be swampland, so. So what is uh, so that's one change I can make right now. What is the primary area? I thought Bosnia marshes would be swampland. Oh, you're thinking marshes. It's not marshes. It's marshes. Yeah. So what kind of? Because I'll just change change it. So what is? It the would be area? woodlands. Woodlands. Okay. What's that put your uh, survival woodlands up to? Well, I'll be thirteen. Oh yeah, he's he he's gonna be fine. And I can at least attempt to try. I've only got a ten, uh, but I can at least attempt to attempt to help. Though I may make it worse. Well, I also have a wolf that can help sniff down prey. So between the two of us, we can do some pretty good hunting. Okay. Well, I think we've established the particulars at this point. Um, so before, uh, before we leave off with the commandant. Uh, Berenike will request uh, some provisions for the journey uh, and we'll just have to deal with whatever uh, reaction we got. Um, okay, give me to a... To be fair, uh, the Commandant did say, I need you to do me a favor and you can use that True. angle. All right, give me a reaction roll plus two since you're doing a favor. Drum roll, please. God help us. Poor Daniel rolls a three. I have a really big crest on my helmet. You shouldn't be wearing your helmet inside. Right. So. Oh, hey, look at right. that. That goes the other way. Well done. So the uh, the commandant will look up at you and have a uh, disinterested look. You see, he ponders it for a moment and says, uh, to Mon, see to it that they're provisioned. And uh, to Mon will um, acknowledge it. This is going to be great. We're going to get all the super crappy uh, rations that they were about to throw out. So we're all going to end up sick yeah. when we reach there because of the bad rations. I'm sure we're used to it by now. Um, so, Timon will open the, the doors to the Commandant's uh, quarters and stand there expecting you to uh, depart. I assume that you, uh, I you do. I my head on the stupid, the stupid low uh, overhead. He will... Uh, yeah. Timon will be the last to leave. He will sort of um, give a, a bow to the Commandant and say, Sir, as he shuts the door. And then the Commandant leans back in his chair and goes back to sleep. Probably. You know these leader types. I know, right? They're only doing work when you're watching. Yeah, I know, right? I'm totally going to look at Baron when I'm thinking that. So you find yourselves at the, uh, the quartermaster. The uh, Timon will um, instruct the quartermaster to give you provisions for Tusculin. Um, I yes, I believe you can. Go food, probably. Give me a reaction roll, someone. Whoever's doing the, the, uh, is being face man. Let's yeah, see. We don't have a let's see if you get the, the stuff that's, you know, Kirk got weevils and, and stuff going Maybe through is it. Is that going to make him the face man of our group? I think so. Well, he could be the. He, he can, can do it for now. Answer. All right, I'll. I'll Don't go worry. With it. If there are any sexy ladies, I'll step. I'll, I'll jump on that grenade. Should I roll diplomacy first and see if that improves the reaction? I the you way can that use it for a reaction. You can replace the reaction roll with a skill roll. 
Yeah, so generally you would re roll the reaction and then you could do the diplomacy. Well, normally, no, they don't do it that way. Probably Skill for playability post. reasons. Yeah, People but diplomacy know that I am, can't... Well, so I have honesty, so plus three. Um, does that... That's, will that help? That's only if they know you're honest. Well, it, this area is within our area, so how long have they... Well, you say you're we not... have a previous kind of... Have, do they know us? Have they... Your troop, you your troop has no rep. no rep at the moment. Okay. So probably diplomacy is going to be the best, right? Yes. So just give me a diplomacy roll. If you succeed, you automatically get a good reaction. Good enough. Okay. Um, the uh, quartermaster will begin bringing out um, loaves of bread, some jerky, some uh, cheese. This is the stuff that's not like, you know, can't be used as a, a weapon. It's not rock hard. So uh, well, that's a shame. You get stuff that you can actually eat, and you'll get enough provisions to get you to uh, Tusculin. Now, I don't know if that's going to affect anyone's encumbrances and stuff, but... Probably will. I it's can one and a half pound per is. day, per person. Yeah, depending on how much it is, I can probably carry it, because I'm still in none, and I Ooh. am the strongest of the group. Uh, the provisions, however, are, are given to you separately. There's no bags or anything like that. It's just put out um, in front of you. You pack it how you want to pack it. Gotcha. So how many rations is each person get? So that's going to be, well, if we do it typically, that's going to be three per day for seven days, I presume. 21. I think that's what you worked out to be. You can get... So, 10 pounds worth? You can get water uh, easily. You just follow yeah, the creeks the and river rivers and stuff. Way, pretty much. And I can even, uh, if need be, Kudo could probably carry some of our goods. I could use my leatherworking skill to maybe design some kind of holster for him, carry some pouches. As you're talking well, about doing this, he will look at you and go, huh? And you get the feeling that he does not approve being your pack mule. Kudos. Or, or pack wolf. Kudos, uh, uh, mental voice is Samuel Jackson. Ah. Oh, that that, gosh, that works well. Into, will put me into light. It won't be a problem if you drop your stuff, if you get into a fight or whatever. But it might affect travel. Yeah, nah, it'll be fine. Um, knowing that a Pentius is already slow, uh, because of the uh, well the height and the small legs. I'm going to double up my rations and offer to carry uh, carry his as well since he can, you know, draw sounds and that's that's neat. He's important. He's not helpful in a fight, but he's important. It all remains to be seen. That's true. But yeah, doubling On up both the cases. rations. Uh, doubling the rations in this case. That I'm still in the light, so I'm 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 okay. Yeah, I'm light, so I'm good. Uh, Materius is probably going to be good. Yeah, what is light. the weight of Traveler's rations? Point five per. That's and we got twenty one, so that's ten point five. So ten point five pounds for. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I figure I just you know carry 
twice as many as normal, so you don't have to carry them at Pentius. I don't know what your I don't know what your your yeah, regular, move regular move is. Probably a good idea. What is his regular move? My uh, regular move right now is uh, three, because I'm oh. lightly encumbered. Oh, that's with encumbrance. What's encumbered? Yeah, encumbered? Without encumbrance, it's uh, four. Goodness. I need to get this man a donkey. Well, he's got short legs. Yeah, we, we probably need horses or something for this at some point. Get rich, get some horses. Yeah, we're working on that. Okay, horses, I'm curious horses. now. What's uh, what's his weight normally? Okay, so Pentius is four feet one inch high. Yeah, he weighs yeah sixty eight pounds. All right, and how much uh, how much gear uh, or how much of the gear do you have? How much weight? I've, 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 I've got I've got. Well, according to the encumbrance chart, I've got up to 40 pounds. You're thinking about putting him on your back, aren't you? I am looking at that to see how where that, how, would, put where that would put me. My total weight carry is 37 right now. All right, well, you guys will provision and uh, distribute it however you want. Work out your respective encumbrances. And uh, then you set out to uh, the Latrium. Are you going to take the roads or are you going to take the trails? Uh, we'll take the uh, easiest way we got. The roads are definitely the easiest. Um but the trails will probably get you there a little bit faster. Uh, so I, there's not a major road going from Quinara to Velitrum. Velitrum. Am I missing that? There is a major road. Goes there. There. Oh, okay. Going all going that way. There. Uh, um. Yeah, I was I was thinking we were going to take the river for that. So, trails then, unless somebody has a better idea. I mean, this is the easiest navigation. Just follow the damn river. All right. So, give me a navigation roll um, anyway. You're not going to get lost, but this will rep this will determine whether you arrive early during the day or you arrive right. um, late during the night. Early. All right, so you spend, you can scratch off um, five meals. As you spend you know, one and a half days traveling, following the uh, the river. There is um, not much of, um, you know, anything other than being a, a rather scenic stroll. You will get to Velitrium. Velitrium is a, a walled um, township. Uh, the walls are predominantly wood is it palisades is that the name for the wooden ones yeah wooden wall yeah so predominantly wooden palisades and you can see that there is some stonework in the process happening as you know the litrium is you know beginning to to grow and there is there is some like settlements around the um the walled city, town. Uh, you will arrive in the 
late afternoon. Um, give me an IQ roll from anyone that wants to roll. Probably the um, highest IQ. Uh, Pentus. That's a definitely a Pentius, yeah. It doesn't take you too long um, to track down the location of um, Tiberius. All right, let's go talk to Tiberius. You should pre-do that, Brian. Yeah, I did um, prior to the crash. All right. I think the database well, might have got balked. Yeah, I suppose it didn't. All right, so you will find out that he is currently um, at a... Heaven. You, Fantastic. You enter the place. I'll get a perception roll from. Uh, no, don't need a perception roll. It doesn't take too much time to locate uh, Tiberius. And Kurgan is from here. Ha! Ah, well, now we know what, where all my money went. Um, we had sick people. Nice. So, sick people... Died. Uh, Tried. you had two days of gastro, so there's still some gastro to be had. So can I still, can I use on the way using naturalist earth and um, esoteric medicine to try to find some herb, herbal remedies? You, I don't think you can use naturalist. I think there's an actual skill for that. I think it's herb law. Yeah, I think that. Naturalist you is to, animals. You need to get a uh, Esoteric uh, medicine with... and, her, and yeah, there's herb lore, but I don't remember what that does. Need to get a Pentius to whip you up a potion. I'm sure it won't make it worse. What about esoteric medicine? I mean, does that help? I so I need to it so it worse. I, esoteric medicine is the skill that you would use if you want to fashion some sort of, you know, it is the tea or something like skill. that. Yeah, it's the tech level three version of first aid. Not first aid. Physician. Yeah, physician. First, I'm going to that. Three if you want to make an esoteric medicine roll, you're welcome to do it. Make it worse. I want you to roll an 18 because that'd be hysterical. And if you have herb law, roll that as well. So, so my dad's name was Herbert. Does that mean I had herb law? Absolutely. That's exactly how it works. You know, I think we'd all always treated esoteric medicine as being the uh, early form of the early form of uh, physician, but I don't think that's actually true. I think esoteric medicine is actually what we would refer to as alternative treatments. Uh, yeah, I think that's probably right. Let me let me look into the. I'm gonna look in GURPS and see. Yeah, but there there on. is a herb lore. Herb lore. Thought yeah. naturalist earth allowed me to also search for stuff. Well, mm -hmm. it can help you identify plants and all that stuff, so it is helpful. 
I guess you could use it as a complementary skill. That's what I was Probably. thinking. That gives you a plus Herb one or plus two? Plus one. Herblor is pointed. I was hoping you'd roll an eighteen there. Herblor is the ability to manufacture herbal concoctions that have magical effects. So that's specifically magical. It only exists in magical game worlds where it functions much like, much as alchemy skill. Unlike alchemy, Herblor does not include the ability to analyze elixirs. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay. On the other hand, an expert in this at this skill can locate magical ingredients for free in the wild by making a few naturalist rolls. So that probably is the one you want. So um, okay, so herbor. you will be able to, on on route to Velitrium, you can find some herbs um, and make Herb. your um, I am not make your tea or whatever. Give me that'll give you another health roll. If you succeed your health roll, your gastro will pass. If you fail, your gastro continues. Well, you found already some passing. pink looking. He found some pink looking plants, uh, and he's calling them Pepto. These black lotus um, flowers. They look really nice. Now, what's the worst that could happen? All right, so by the time you get to Velitrium, your gastro has subsided and um, you're no longer in dire straits. Diarrhea straits. Well, entering the tavern, you are immediately hit by the aromas of ale and food and the drum of people talking. Um, however, over that, you can hear a bit of a commotion off in one corner. You see some soldiers, uh, three soldiers that uh, are sort of standing, standing up around um, someone, and the third oh sorry a fourth soldier you see sitting on the belly of tiberius who is laying on the floor oh there what's all this then damn it i was gonna say that as you <laughs> as you approach you can hear the soldier saying tiberius where's my money i gave you the pelts you said you'd give me the money i want my money and tiberius is going um I promise I'll get you the money. I don't have it right with me right now. I expected some deliveries to come and I'll get you your money. I, you know I'm good for it. So you will approach and you will say, what is it you said? Oh, I was just being a smart ass. What's all this then? The uh, the guys will turn to you. Um, you guys have no rep at this point. No, so, but I'm very large. Okay. He's large. We're armored. Give me a uh, reaction roll. Big guy. Yeah. I guess you can add your size, five, add your seven. size modifier, and whatever else that might be relevant. Uh, let's see. These guys are do these guys look uh, like they're actually experienced soldiers, or they look like you're run of the mill. Um, grunt. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the the guy turns around. The guy that's sitting on Tiberius sort of turns around. You can you hear him say, start to say. It's none of your bit, and then you see his eyes track up um, to uh, take in your size. Um, he says, "Big old grin." 
Um, Tiberius owes owes us some money. We uh, we just here to collect. Well, we're here to find and out what happened to his money. Tiberius is on the ground. And says, "I promise, I'll I'll pay him. I I promise, I'll pay him. I can. I'm good for the money." We'll take it from here, guys. The uh, the guy that's sitting on his belly will uh, get up and step to the side. And he says, we'll be back in a couple of days. You better have that coin. Or uh, we may not be so friendly. Um, Tiberius being quite you know, large and fat sort of rolls over onto his side, props himself up and says, yes, 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 I'll get it. You, you'll get your money. He uh, then looks up to Boulder and says, well, big guy, help me up. And he sort of stretches an arm forward. I have to lean down really far away. It's, yeah, I'll yank him up. Yeah, but you got long arms. All right, you heft his weight up and he then sort of dusts himself off. And he says, you said you're... You're here to find my stuff, right? The wicked baron. Commandant at uh, Quinara sent us to find out what happened to it. He goes, finally. He uh, sort of gestures to a, a table and uh, sort of indicates, take a seat. He calls over to the um, the wench that's serving and says, Drinks for all my friends. Put it on my tab. Oh, that was a terrible mistake on his part. Where, oh, wait a minute. He just said he doesn't have the money and yeah, he's putting it on his tab. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! He's not paying, he's putting it on a tab. You uh you see that the, the wench sort of looks to the the innkeep and the innkeep just sort of gives gives her a nod um and then ales are brought to, to all of you. He says Yes, it's three days now. Overdue. They should have been back from Tusculin. All my wares were with them, and three girls, three of my best. I'm sure one of your soldiers there has uh, run away with my goods, probably taken my women as well. Right. Well, we'll uh, we'll get the particulars uh, who was in the who was in the convoy and what the route they were taking and what did they have with them and basically anything that would identify them and their and where they should have been. So he will um, explain that he sent the uh, the goods. Um, with a wagon, there was two soldiers escorting. Um, these are not your your soldiers. These were, you know, contracted by Tiberius, so they're just, you know, security. Um, there is his driver, uh, which is also his apprentice. Then there was three women as well in the wagon. They were due back um, three days ago. And they were uh, taking the main road to Tusculin and back? Yes, 
they've been given explicit instructions not to stray from the road. You know how it is with these Picts. They cannot be trusted. Okay, well, I'm not sure that we need to know anything else necessarily, unless somebody can think of something. Of the, uh, for the, the guards, the women, the directors. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Whatever we can get to identify them. Well, he'll give you um, descriptions. He's a little vague on the soldiers and just basically describes someone that could be pretty much any soldier. But it's like... Shortish, tallish, young, youngish, yeah, oldish. Yeah. He had, like, leather armour, carried a sword. Um, obviously, Tiberius doesn't, doesn't you know, care too much for the, um, the, the soldiers, but he gives you detailed descriptions of the the three women and his driver apprentice. And he, he describes the women as, you know, being exotic and, um, you know, talking them up as being true beauties and such. But, you know, you've seen Tiberius turn up at the fort every now and then, and they're probably not the women that he's describing and not exactly the ones that you've seen him with. All right. Is there anything else we need? We got the who, what, where, when, and why, at least from this end. Uh, he says, uh, thank you for helping me out back there. Does Tiberius have any rivals or enemies that might uh, might be interested in his shipments? Uh, you question him, and he says, "There are some the rivals, but they wouldn't go so far as to 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 steal my my stuff and on my my women. It's it's friendly friendly rivalry. It's been three days now. The." Uh, I'm sure they've come to no good. Now, do we know of any particular dangers on this road that uh, we would immediately begin to suspect? There is always dangers. You do have the odd bandit. You do have mercenaries that have quit, just give up. Um, and in their departure... They usually wreak as much havoc as they, they can on their way out because they're not coming back. Um, and then, of course, you have the, the Picts, but uh, yeah, usually if there's, if there's trouble from the Picts, um, there's repercussions. So right. they, they avoid you know, too much harassment. You know, a pick might turn up at a settlement and, you know, start rummaging for food and, um, you know, might take some some livestock or something like that, but nothing, nothing major. At least the ones that are on uh, this side of the river. Well, we Those will... We'll see if Tiberius can put us up for the night and we will head out early in the morning, probably. When uh, when you say, ask him to put you up for the night, he goes, um, uh, yeah, uh, I'll arrange something. Hey, stables are fine for me. I'm not picky. Um, Kirkin could use his uh, 
I mean, he is known in this in this city. He could just well, yeah. If Kurgan's got a place we can stay, we'll stay there. So, I think Kurgan probably has a place for us to stay in this area. You, um, yeah. Do you, your family and all that are still here? Well, the father, I mean, the family, you know, so if you remember his background, father and mother got killed. Uh, youngest brother and youngest sisters got kidnapped. So he's trying to hopefully get them back. Um, but he has friends. He's known. His father was well known. Okay. Um, so give me a reaction roll. This will determine whether your friends are willing to you know, put all you guys up for the night. So I can, in this particular case, probably use plus three because they know he's honest. Yep. All right, you know a friend that you can call on um, and they'll put you up for for the night. Then we'll let uh, Tiberius off the hook. You can see he's relieved uh, when you mention that you have a place. And so we shall be about our business. All right. So you can scratch off another, another meal um, off your um, rations. And in the morning, you start to head out. And in the morning, do I feel naturally better if three days have passed? Yes. The, uh, the aches and pains have, have passed. Did you want Kurgan to, to, to try to help you out? Oh no, it's okay. It was I knew it was gonna pass eventually. You could potentially have tried to create a potion or something. How does that work? Potentially. Potentially. But you know, it's, it comes, it goes. If you guys it's have also, um, uh, get a potion to make him grow a tail, so if you guys have hiking, you are welcome to make a roll. Yep. I think it's is it forty miles a day on good roads? Mm, something like that. I think it's your move no. times ten. So what is the slowest incumbent move? Four. Currently it's four, and it's Impentius who is unencumbered because I'm likely carrying his stuff. All right, so you can do 40 miles a day. So you start down the road. Um, well, is this a good road or an average road? Good road. So then we might be able to get a little farther then. But some of you failed your hiking check, so you like... Well, that's another matter. Sprained ankles. Did Ethan bail on us? Yeah, I was in the bathroom. What a slacker. Roll your hiking if you have it. It doesn't matter. Um... I heard that part, but I help point five. Holy crap, how do you not have hiking? Because it wasn't on any of my lists. All right, so you yeah. can scratch off a uh, another three meals from your uh, stockpile, and towards the uh, the afternoon, you will cross Scalp Creek. 
it's not a very big creek and there's a uh, a ford uh, in the creek you will cross that and then i will get perception rolls from everyone please which means something bad is gonna happen it's a trap Is this a vision based? This is a vision based, yes. So that's uh, plus two, plus five. So it's by five. I'm just looking for the person that succeeded by the most or failed by the least. Wow, a Pentius got it by nine. Wow. Is there any. That's because he's sitting. Like that? He's and sitting on a... um, Boulder's shoulders. He's taking no, it easy. He's no, just I'm looking not around. I'm carrying him. I'm carrying all of his gear. Okay, so you're not master blastering it. No, because that would put me into no faster than, than he would move at encumbered of three. Maybe later when I grow even stronger. All right, so it is a Pentius that will notice um, that a, a few, mi <clears throat> few miles past the crossing at Scalp Creek, um, there are some odd wagon tracks which uh, have dug a, uh, a little rut in the um, the soft earth off the main road and it uh, disappears off into some uh, some trees this is enough for you to uh, you know be at least curious as to uh, what this is well i failed my curious check i want to go check it out do we need to use tracking to follow the tracks or are they pretty prevalent uh, oh, yeah, I have tracking too. you can roll tracking i think it's plus 10. plus 10 wow to track a wagon i think they went that way You don't have to track for long before you hear the buzz of flies um, up ahead. And then there's a, a subtle gust of wind or change in wind direction. And then you smell the stench of death. Um, you uh, proceed a little further and you come to a... A uh, small clearing. Actually, damn it. I forgot to show you travel pick. Lame. Fail. So I'm watching... Uh... The thing you're doing there in uh, Twitch, and one of the things that I started doing, Brian, is I actually create a story for the episode, and then put links to all the uh, the items that I'm going to use in that 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 episode. Yeah, I normally do that, but I know you guys are watching the stream, so I've got. I've got everything in um, Realm Works. Gotcha. Well, yeah, just say so, and I will just pop out the uh, the stream chat to watch that and get rid of the That's stream right. thing. It's do that? it's fine. Yes, I just have to remember how. It's probably good if someone's watching the stream because then if something uh, happens, chat settings. Uh, there is a pop out chat option. Yeah, if something happens to the stream, then someone's going to be aware of it. Like when Mel well, it won't be me for having this, uh, for mocks someone for having her dice. All right, so you step into the clearing. There is the stench of death. You can see a wagon. Um, surrounding that wagon is 
three bodies. These three bodies are absent a head. Well, a cleaved head no longer plots. Uh, there is also a the mule that draw uh, drew the wagon um, has also been killed. That's too bad. We were hoping for a Pentius to have a horror, a, a ride. It looks to have been speared, um, and uh, give me an IQ roll. You would ask for those. Holy cow. As long as Apentius gets to make it, that's uh that's fine. Just someone needs to succeed. Oh, I got by zero. So I didn't fail. Wow. Oh no. That's you don't get Everybody plus ten on my so cue. <laughs> oh, wow, Kurgan, you don't get a plus ten. No, no, that was a mistake. So uh no, you will see that didn't succeed. He failed. There are several strips of meat that have been cut off the um, the mule. Um, so parts of the, the mule have been butchered. By zero. You rolled a 12 and your IQ is 11. Oh, that's right. Failure. Sorry. Math is hard for Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the goods in the wagon have been strewn all over the place. Um, and uh, what skill? Give me an IQ. Everyone give me an IQ minus six. Ah. I think... Criminology is IQ minus six. Oop. Something like that. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my god. Bother. I know, right? Oh, I was supposed to turn the cheats off, wasn't I? You're supposed to, yes. So my bad. you're all looking over this place. Um, Boulder, your experience has told you that uh, it is most likely Picts that have um, are involved here. The uh, the goods that have been taken from the the wagon are those that would be of value to a Pict. Um, so things like clothes, fine clothes, and um, spices and things like that have just been left there of no value um the taking of heads is also a common uh, trait of the pits you do look around um and you do not see any trace of the uh, the women gosh i wonder what could happen to them mm -hmm. But can we uh, the soldiers, the, the soldiers look to be, have been uh, shot with arrows, uh, as there is a, a broken arrow shaft still sticking out of one of them. Um, and from what you can tell, the driver uh, perhaps tried to flee, um, didn't get very far before being uh, hit in the back with an axe. Well, it looks like this one headed off in that direction. So, right before if, that guy asked him a question. If you have tracking, you are welcome yep. to make a roll. And this you are going to be at plus, plus five, five, I think. Five for the people, and then you're at a penalty based off of the terrain and when it happened. And so, then if they're trying to hide the tracks. Tracking how long is this? Is so how long has right? it been? So it's oof, yeah, every thirty four days. Yeah, so, so 
minus five the trail is more than a day old uh it's not more than a week so it's not at minus 10 so, so uh, it's zero. a group of it's men it's plus six zero. so it's gonna be plus one uh not not it's plus six not plus five you can also take extra time yeah, it's minus five if the trail's more than a day old, plus six if following a group of men. Uh, acute vision may actually help you there. Yeah, plus two um, acute vision. And then uh, the wolf has discriminatory smell, so would it be able to smell out the picks more than others? In terms of tracking, yes, but if you've got to find the trail first. So I'll, I'll let the wolf be a uh, um, complimentary role. Can we uh, do a skill yeah. default from perception? Good God, man. Oh, boy. Trying to fail. Yeah, I can. I can. Uh, uh, I haven't uh, rolled yet. I'm just going to be a plus one, uh, which is not likely to be better than his. So that would have been. The... It would have been um, acute smell, wow, not vision. Be the same. Yeah, acute smell. Um, plus right, so two anyway. You'll get plus two to your tracking. You can't can't get more than two complimentary. Now, uh, for Kudo's case, you need to remember if he's got discriminatory smell, that that alone is a plus four to tracking. So then that would be successful. Well, it's just, just plus two for us. So. I'm going to roll my tracking now to see if I can... So it's plus two, and then we got the... You said a natural plus five, and then the minus the five for the day what? old trail, plus no, six. No, it's going to be minus five for more than a day old, uh, but it's not a week old, uh, and then plus six for following a group. Uh, so it'll be plus one. And then plus two from the assist? Just one. Just, just plus one. Okay, so... So plus two. Total, yeah. Holy Good God, man. What is Ooh. going on? What are you talking about? The tracks are going this way, not that way. All right, oh, so <laughs> you will be looking for tracks. Um, and, yeah. You know, I found them. You're walking around, you know, scratching your head as to where all these tracks are. And you can see Kudo is off, you know, maybe 50, oh, sorry, not 50, 30 yards off to the, the side. He's just sitting at you, looking at you strange, like, He's what are you, what are you doing? One. Baldur's doing the it's, same thing. It's like this way. I'll go over there and start looking. <laughs> I'm gonna be talking to the wolf. Like, uh, is he is he always like this? Yeah, in uh, Samuel L. Jackson voice. Kudo knows more sometimes than I do. He's kept me alive a lot. You know, I'm glad I have him. Oh, I was talking to the wolf, not to you. Oh, <laughs> Kudo will probably look at you and kind of nod its head. <laughs> So you, uh, what's the the maximum? It's thirty times. So you spend, you know, twenty minutes, half an hour, trying to work out where these tracks tracks are. You back and forth, and that's about when you notice that Kudo is is there. It's like it's this way, dude. Wow. I'm not I even just... a great tracker, and I was over there uh, playing with the dog. I, I you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be like, yeah, you know, I was just making sure, you know, it wasn't the tracks weren't there were no other false trails. I knew Kudo had it right. <laughs> Kudo goes. And I'll he'll give, he'll uh... look he'll look back to the rest of the group, shake his head. No, he didn't know. So as you approach Kudo, um, you'll see he stands and puts his nose to the ground and, and starts sniffing and then um, continues off. He goes you know, 10, 20 yards, stops to look to make sure that you're following, 
um, then continues. You can make another tracking roll at this point, but just give me your base skill base skill roll. Um, do you want kudos or mine? Yours. What? All right, so you will, once you are on the trail, you will see that there is a, uh, a number of um, people on this trail. There are several that are barefoot and some that have um, what you imagine is, you know, the, the moccasins that um, picked have. You can see the uh, the stitching and such. Um, you also see shoes that uh, would resemble that of uh, a lady. So like slippers. And drag marks. Um, no drag marks. It looks like they're walking but you you can't get any real detail you know what condition they're walking or anything like that you guys do know that pits don't rape women um because a a woman's chastity is somewhat sacred and bad spirits and bad mojo happens if you um desecrate you know, their chastity. So <clears throat> if these women um, were taken by the Picts, they're likely to become slaves. Well. Or potential wives to... Maybe, but not likely. Gonna have to go catch them. Gotta catch them all. Yep. Well, um, we know that the trail is so, going that way now. Yeah, that way. What? I was that already way? telling you. That way that is way. Um, is west along the river, um, and then, oh, sorry, the creek west along South Creek. It goes for a um, little under a mile. And then there's a fallen tree which crosses the creek and it appears that they have crossed on that fallen tree uh, on the other side and they they then depart the, the river heading in a southwesterly direction. I'll give okay. anyone with navigation can make a roll. Uh, where are we on the map? Hey, that's my first fail. Okay. Hey, you. <laughs> to be fair, you're probably at some significant penalties for not having any equipment. You imagine that you're in that area there somewhere. Um, okay. With your navigation failure of one, you're not 100% certain but you've got a reason, reasonable idea or gut that they're probably heading towards Hawk Village. Well, we need to pick up the pace and catch up to them. That's the question. Do we give chase or go to Fort Tusculin and work from there. I guess we probably want to give chase because it's probably time sensitive. They've Plus, been at least... they have they violated, violated the uh, the treaty. Well, that's a good reason to go report to the fort, but... Ah! But if we could save the women, you know, we're saving the women. That's important. Oh, well, wait, what'll it be, on. boss man? I say we uh, go after him, and if it starts to look bad, we can change our minds. 
It's not going to look bad. I'm here. I don't have a response to that. Right. We're going that way. All right. Well, you will start trudging off that way, following these tracks through the the long grass. Um, Luckily, I heard that a Pentius should be a natural-born sprinter. Very dangerous very over short dangerous distances. Over short distances. Exactly. And it is about this time that the camera stops following you and just continues to watch you walk off through the uh, the long grass. Um, what we can't hear is the, the, the director going, why did you stop? Sorry, no, sir, that's when the stuck. that's when the grass starts to make those little raptor lines headed right towards us. Nice, nice. <laughs> Raptors. They exist in Conan. Oh, come on. This isn't the Viking Age. Of course it is. Laser Raptors. They don't have Laser Raptors here. saber two Tigers. And that is where we'll leave it for this week. Yay. Yay. You know, Excellent. You know yeah. I don't think we uh, actually had the conversation about how many points we were going to do. So how many points are we going to do? Is this going to be two. fast progression or slow? I was going to give you uh, two points because I was going to allow um, flesh wounds where you can use, you'll have to use character points. But... So, now that you have a potential healer, um, uh, that's not going to be as problematic. So you could actually recover from injuries and still, uh, and not have to take, not have to take you know, weeks out of gameplay. So is yeah. anyone else going to end up picking up navigation land, or should I? you know, improve it. I may need to tweak my character a little bit more to be uh, more yeah. ranger-focused. Yeah, you probably need to take navigation as well. Okay, so I'll hold off putting, dumping the two points in it. Yeah, I'm going to need to, if I'm going to be in charge of this, I'm going to have to uh, pick up a little bit more uh, social skills. Leterius, since he's going to be our second, what does he need? Yeah, I'm oh, going to uh, quite, quite a bit of changes, I think. Yeah, we Was were kind of yeah, last we minute kinda... anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, signature gear, um, how do you imagine that working um, for Kurgan? Because I, I wanted it to be a kind of like a magical longbow that he inherited from his father and which it is essence imbued into it. Magical items are so rare that it is, they might as well not exist. You could have a magical item if you paid the dollars for it, but it's going to, because of the rarity and all that, I think it costs four times as much. Something like that. So a thousand in, instead of two hundred. Oh no, it's going to be a lot more than that. That's just you know what what you're what you're wanting to to add on. Oh yeah. So you'd have to work out the um, the cost to create the magic item, and that's based on the points times fifty. Uh, um, cost to no. create times fifty, and then you have to increase that. I think doubled because of rare now we could potentially use the dungeon fantasy stuff for that which is a lot easier to work with but that still may be subject to the uh additional cost for the world i do think some of the edf enchantments were cheaper 
the first the normal were yeah so that might need some adjustment but that solve that prevents us from having to do a bunch of friggin math if there so is magic i might add a drawback magical drawback as well just to balance it out so in other words like only usable by kurgan or something like that or um, no like it makes you glow drawback. like it makes you glow like the sun while you're trying to hide i think in stormbringer you have to kill people to to continue to be able to use it and you know it has to be innocent people because magic in Conan sucks. We can well, work that in the form. Uh, th yeah, I think we'll have to figure out how um, how Apentius is going to be using these incantations because, you know, I the incantations book is in line with dungeon fantasy. So the encounters can't do any healing. They can't do any sort of druidic. They're not supposed to be replicating that stuff, but, but we're in a very different healing? context. Here. Healing? You can yeah, use RPM. Can use use RPM. No, 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 no. In dungeon fantasy incantation, not RPM. In DF 19, the right. encounters right. are limited. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. but, but we're not in dungeon fantasy proper. Right. Well, I'll throw that to you guys. Like I said, I was going to say character would be two points, but I will allow flesh wounds, but you have to spend a point to uh, to take the flesh wound. Um, but if we do that, then we will do the encanters can't do healing. Oh, okay, I see. Uh, yeah, because... In DF, it's healing is the province of divinely empowered adventures, such as the cleric and holy warrior. Incantation can repair things, but not heal the living. So it's up to you guys. I mean, I've got, you know, for instance, there's repair undead. Now, it's just as easy to create a repair the living. Uh, and it's going to be a healing spell. It's going to give you HP back. But I'm cool with you guys having healing magic if that's what you want. I don't know. I, I think it's kind of like uh, I kind of like not having it because it means, you know, hey, we, we could die. Uh, that's true. Um, on the other hand, you may be very thankful you've got it. Well, I mean, yeah, I. The other thing is, is that esoteric medicine does work in this kind of environment because you're dealing with herbal remedies and stuff like that. So I have esoteric medicine as a ranger. But it's just first aid. Yeah, I've got first yeah, aid. It's first no, aid. No, you, you need to ditch esoteric medicine. I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's what you want here. So just go first aid. You, you'd take first aid. You'd have. You'd probably want to go ahead with the herb lore, and herb. Uh, or whatever. You might want to actually throw a point in physician or something like that, just to have it. But I think esoteric medicine is the wrong thing. It was always kind of confusing, anyway. Cool. Well, things to things to discuss, debate, argue. Damn it! I don't have my script. You fail. Yeah, you kind of have to. Guess you'd have to open up another the other campaign and cut and paste it. Yeah. Well, I could say my, if I do esoteric medicine, it does say the skill might represent uh, Ayurvedic medicine, chi treatment, hermetic, yin yang, or any. So hermetic, right. if I went that, would be the but herbivore, that's, right? That's modern. So in a modern setting, 
that stuff is esoteric. It's not esoteric in this setting. Here, it's just medicine. True. So that would be just more of, you know, first aid physician because that's what you're exactly. doing anyway, what you're using. Okay. Well, it does say, though, it goes on to say that in TL5 plus settings, esoteric medicine is often perceived as quack medicine regardless of actual effectiveness. Say that again? Or not. Say that again? I'll read it again. Uh, in TL5 plus settings, esoteric medicine is often perceived as quack medicine regardless of actual effectiveness. Yeah, this isn't yeah, TL5, this isn't. though. So That's my point. So it, what, it, what it's it saying is be, that before TL5, TL5, it is now it is not now, considered quack medicine. It's considered general, what what is normal. Yeah, it's legit. Yeah, but in that case, it's not esoteric anymore. I, I, you know, I, yeah, the, the point is, it's the, weird. The, skill, it's weird. the skill, the skill is esoteric medicine. It's, it's, a, it's a generalist skill, given the fact that it's a generalist approach to the various tech levels. I think what, what he's saying is, is, yeah, we're not at TL5 plus, ergo, you know, it's not esoteric in the sense that TL5 plus people would look at it. But in this culture, it's it's legit medicine. Okay. Well, if you just take the first sentence of the uh, the skill description, it says that uh, it's basically not scientific medicine. Exactly. Well, so TL3 what does that mean? Have a lot of what science. does that mean to you in this case? <laughs> well, yeah. it then goes on yeah. to say it's usually associated with magical or spiritual traditions. But it could include acupuncture, massage, alchemical, or herbal preparations. So I, I, I think right, it's but a if catch that's all, but if, that's if that's all normal, then it's normal. So the question so, is, what's yeah. normal? It's what's normal? Yeah, I would say what's normal is is exactly what he's using the skill for. It's just you know we're caught up in the in the name esoteric. We shouldn't be uh, because the actual description of the skill is, is quite broad. And it also says it should always be at least as good as first aid. The attentions of a trained healer of any kind are prefer preferable to bleeding to death. Um, it's more of now looking at the GM for the effectiveness of esoteric medicine relative to physician is up to the GM. It might be more effective, equivalent, but different or less effective. So it, it so that's where. The GM's going to have to decide well, where it goes okay. in that terms. We'll say it's equivalent, but different. Achieves the same thing, but through different means. So for me, um, my means is probably going to be more the herbal, which is the naturalist earth and, you know, finding the herbs and using the esoteric medicine to find, you know, because that's what I'm used to. I okay, grew up so online. then in your skill description, um, do esoteric medicine bracketed um, herb law or something like that. Herbal or just herbal? Yeah, something herbal. like that. Herbal. Yeah. Something that, yeah, specializes it to, to that in particular. So you can okay, so grind up roots grind and plants and whatever. plants and whatever. Right. So then I will, for Apentius, for the incantations, will 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 not involve uh, healing in any any in any capacity. If that's what you want to do. Right. I still think uh, being able to do some magical healing may, may really come in handy, but uh, that that's up to you guys. Well, you do have flesh wounds, um, unless, of course, you don't have any spare character points. Flesh wounds, of course, doesn't stop you from getting damage. It just reduces one instance of damage um, to one point. Yeah. yeah. Padre, you haven't, you haven't been with us as long, but uh, we've played a lot of games where you've got uh, magical healing and and or tech 
tech-based healing and all that stuff available. And sometimes it's nice to uh, get out of that rut and uh, take the danger a little bit. Yeah, it's whatever you guys want. I mean, I'm I'm happy to to uh, not do uh, magical healing. All right, I think we're good to end the stream. Uh, we can discuss any other stuff in the forums or um, Discord or whatever. So, if you're watching this and have any questions, corrections, suggestions, or general hecklings, feel free to leave a comment here or find us on Discord. Thank you for watching. Olympus out. Goodbye, stream. Nice stream.